In this video, let's continue working with arrays. Let's take a look how can we actually affect geometry independent of what wherever we run it over our Azure Wrangle nodes. Let's take a look at another loop which is specifically designed for the for work with arrays for each. And then let's end up with the, some of the tricks you can do with the strings. How can we convert strings to the integer or float numbers? Let's look at our for loop that we created in the last tutorial. Let's do this for and for both loops we created and then we're gonna move on to the next loop. So as you can see we have in the last video we just appended these values to our console. But let's say I actually want to change the geometry, let me change the color of it. If something happens, let's say if if these points are above zero line on the y-axis, I want to make it, maybe make them red. So how can we do that? First thing we're gonna do is delete this append function because we don't want now add these values that we get from our loop to the array list. So we don't want to use the array list. What we need to do is actually create the if loop. We're basically gonna say if this p is let's say bigger than y, then it's gonna do something. So let's say if and let's say our p position dot y let's say since it's a vector let's say let i is bigger than zero and then remember in the curly brackets what's going to happen and remember the set point attribute function that we used let's use it so for set point attribute first of all we have to specify geo so that's going to be zero then we have to say what we want to write which one in which attribute we want to write in so we're just going to create the cd attribute then the points that we want to run it over, so we have our point number, which is C. C is our counter, so let's reference C. Then we have to give it value that we want to set it on, so for the red, it's going to be, since it's a vector, it's actually, oh well, yeah, since it's a vector, let's just 1, 0, and 0, going to give us, it's going to give us red color, and then use the set command. We just we did go through this in the last video, so this should be pretty familiar now. now. Let's just take a look what it does. You can see whenever our y position is above above zero, it's gonna paint them red with the one zero zero. Let's just create a sphere. Let's take a look how it works in there. Let's make a primitive, maybe two. You can see can move it around and whenever it's above y it's gonna be painted red. Now what's cool about it, this is independent of what we ran it over. This whole code is independent from what we ran it over. So for our while loop that we created in the last tutorial, it's basically the same thing. All we really need to do is delete this append. Let's just copy our if loop and just paste inside with between the position and the C plus plus our counter. You can see it's the same thing. It's connected to the let's connect sphere. You can see basically the same thing. Just uh, the the while loop is a little bit different, but the same thing is happening in here. Now let's create a simple for each loop. First of all, let's create an int array. And let's give it some num values. One, two, three, four, and five, like that. Now, first of all, let's print out its length. You remember in the last video we we printed out the length of the arrays. So let's do it right now to take a look what it what actually for each loop is going to do. So print f. Now you can see we have printed out our array, but what we want to do is actually link print out length of it. So all we have to do is this my array reference. We have to wrap it around in length function like in the last video, like that. You can see now we have 5, so our array length is 5. And now actually let's create the actual loop for each. So first of all, in for each, the most basic one is going to, we have to give a int value. For this time we have to need an int value. That's going to store each one of these 5 values that we have, because the length of the array is 5, each one of these values is going to be stored inside our int that we're going to create now, int let's say c, and then we have to reference our array which is my array, like that. And now what we want to do is print out the values. 
So just print up. If we print out my error, you can see what has it it has done. Actually, I remember not the quote, but semicolon like that. You take a look what he have done is we have basically copied this array five times one, two, three, four, five times. But if we reference our counter that we just created, which is C, you can see it's let's clear it out. You can see it's one, two, three, four, five. If you take a look at the help inside the Houdini, the Houdini website, you can see it's basically going to, for each iteration, it's going to copy the current number inside the value that we just created to see, then execute the statement. And this is basically the thing that we did. But what's cool about this is that you would think that it's a one value, but you can see that it's actually looped around and executed it one by one. If we do a slash n, you can see each one of these values are in its own line because it basically did the loop and then printed it out did the loop and printed out the value another thing to note that we now have to define our int c inside for each loop we could actually just create int c equals zero in here and then we just reference the c like that basically the same thing for the little advanced for each loops let's take a look at, at enumerated form the only difference between this and our simple form is that it's basically going to hold there's going to be another integer value in our for each in our for each loop, which is going to hold the index of the array array's value. So let's say at the, at this, let's just copy this one and take a look at it. Let's copy this semicolon here. Let's see what it prints out. So you can see it basically prints out the, the number and then the string. So all the difference is that this int value is going to hold the number of which one of these. So Monday is 0, Tuesday is 1, 2, 3, 4, and basically it's going to hold the index of the every string in our array. And then it can also print it out. So that's, that's this we can use actually to use a for each loop to actually modify it, our attributes in the string you can see there are many values but if we let's say we want to get we want to control these p values position values we have to use a little bit different method so first of all what we need to do is get our values inside one array again so remember what we did it this is with the vectors so what i'm going to do with this i'm going to delete all of these before only leave, leave the vector and vector array after that, let's use a for or while loop. For this, I'm just going to use for loop. And if you remember, we entered, we entered int value. That was our counter. After that, we want to, how many times we want to run this command, this loop. So that was number of points that we have. And then we needed our counter to also move. That, that, that was C++. Basically, we are adding one value to every loop to the C. After that, in our loop, what we want to do is p position. We want it to set to the point, and that was with the point with the point function. It was just zero, then an attribute p, and then the the number of the point, which is the, our counter c. It's going to be small c like that. And then all we have to do is append it to the our array. So we wanted to append p to p position all our position that we just got, which is point like that, and that's it. So now, first of all, we also are forgot to give a actually c its value. So c is going to be zero. Now you can see we have print out our values, our position values in our array. So our array holds these values. Now to use this enumerated form, all we have to do is write our for each loop. And now remember, there must be an int before the vector values, which is basically going to our, be our counter. So let's call it counter. After that, we need our vector. Let's see, let's call it position and then our array, which is pos all. 
let's open up a curl bracket and write in for our loop just like in our for loop you can see ep position dot y we can actually even copy this one well actually let's just write it ourselves so if our value which is a which we want to address is this position because in the positions we are writing in our values from array we are basically writing our values inside position so that's why I want to for each vector we want to address this vector which is position if vector is let's say is bigger than zero that's actually vector dot y the y value what's going to happen is we're gonna make it zero we're gonna set point attribute which is 0, then a P, position, and now we want to, for the po which point to do this over, if we have to reference our counter, that's why we, that's why we, this is a little bit different than this one, where we referenced our C, which is our also our counter in our for each, for each loop, now only, dif only the difference is that we are now referencing our counter, which is basically the number of the of the which element of the our array we are running it over so just put down a counter and then we want to reference our the value that we want to run it in and that value is going to be our vector that's going to be position then just write in set like that you can see now it's actually not done doing anything inside that's because we are now setting the p value to be exactly the same thing because our array is the same thing as our position we're basically setting the same thing on it so before we before we set this attribute what we need to do is give a position position pos.y its actual value so that's a pos.y we want it to be zero like that so now it's actually going to add this zero give that zero actually its value because now we have different values then in array and the thing that we set up in here and let's just take a sphere and let's put it inside here so that's more visual one thing you know that you can see when i try to move it you can see it's kind of laggy that's because actually we have still our printf command on we are still printing out every position you can see of this sphere out so just for now to make it more visual more doable just disable this printf now we can very easily move this sphere now let's get away a little bit from the loops and let's talk about how can we another cool thing we can do inside rex is to convert the string attributes to the integer or float attributes so what i have have in here in a zbrush what i did is create four different objects and i named them both one two three and four and if once we have imported it inside ZBrush, you can see automatically it's going to create a primitive attribute, which is going to be its name. You can see there's bolt, and it's the same name, same name that we gave it to. So, but let's say you want to extract this one and the last number from it, from it, and create it as integer, so we can then randomize it and something like that, and for it not to be any more a string. So there are a couple of functions inside Houdini that we can use first of all let's create a string without the bolt underscore with it so let's just strip out everything except the last numbers from our strings that we can use with the stream function so first of all let's, let's say let's create attribute string let's say string numbers equals let's use this strip function and the only thing that we need is, is the attribute that we want to strip it from which is name from our name attribute we want to strip out and then we have to write inside the inside the quotes what we want to strip out with so we want to bolt and underscore like that then just end it you can see now we have our new attribute which is a string numbers you can see it has stripped out everything except the last part of our strings and since we do not really need this as a, as a attribute we can just create it as a string 
for us to convert our string to the integer we have to use another function which is in this case going to be a toy function so at the most basic level we have to just uh, let's create an create an attribute in the attribute and let's reference our string that we want to convert our values so let's create int my numbers equals and then we all we have to do is now reference our string that holds our only our numbers so it's not going to work if if now let's say we have our also it's not going to work if we reference name because in name we also we have these we have our bolt underscore so all we have to do is reference the string that that has only the numbers in it which is string numbers like that close it down and you can see in my numbers you can see that we have one two three and four and these are now integer values or we can also make it a float value all you can do is change the float float and then instead of a toy a to on f instead of i it's an f you can see now it's a it's added dot zero at the end of it so now these are float values another two cool thing is that actually we can delete multiple these strings actually don't have to be the same name at every time so what i'm going to do is put down a name node and i'm going to create two groups so let's just say these two is going to call bolts let's call them bolts and let's give its number like a two that's going to be not bolts two or even like that let's just add another one and the these two are going to be let's say screws there's going to be two actually let's put it one like that so you can see now if we have attribute that has different namings for each one of the primitives we have bolts and screws so in our node all we really have to do is first of all let's create this as attribute again so we can see what it does let's disable this one for now so string so first of all we have to change what you want to delete so if you delete let's say you want to delete the bolts let's write in bolts like that let's take a look what, what it did so you can see that where we had bolts you can see it's actually deleted them only thing now it's there's a two in there but you can see that in screws you can see the actually the last last the first letter is gone because it's s so basically it's deleted also s because it's because this name starts with s and we ended with s it's deleted it so let's say we delete this we have screws and now we have s2 so that's one thing to know that but for now you can just call bolts and screws you really don't even have to do any like a spaces between them we can just write inside them and you see they are both deleted and after that it's basically the same thing since this attribute let's put it at like that and you can see it's the same thing now we have deleted both of these now we, the names are different but as long as we reference these both names inside what we want to strip out we're going to be fine and in creating integer or float values and that's it for this tutorial, I hope you found it useful and see you next time.